Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host Josh Chapman, and today we've got seven in the seven in the can, seven in the bag. It's just dropped. I haven't got a football analogy today with it. I, I couldn't think of anything. I've literally just turned the episode off, and I've come straight here. <laughs> Let's jump it in. We've got uh, returning guests. We've got Catherine back as always, and we've got Dale Williams is back again. How you going, buddy? You haven't been banned. From your outpost, of your out, you, you're dropping your language last time. You've been, you were put in podcast jail last week, and yeah, you're back whoops. this week. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, I don't know if anybody listening. You were, there was a little like a subtle dip of the audio. You wouldn't even know it. You never even know it was there. Sorry, I, you, you know, know what? what? Say it like that, like with uh, such uh, insincerity. <laughs> although after tonight's episode with with your mate back again, you might just be like, "Oh man, I'm gonna have to control myself <laughs> all over again." Oh, oops. Yeah, I will control myself. Let's just uh, leave it. We'll call him a prick. How about that? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We can handle that. That's all right. Yeah. How are you going, Catherine? Oh, it's the Super 7. Um, oh, Feeling mate, good? Feeling so good. Um, so I've done two watches now. Uh, it's only been out for about two and a half hours and you've managed to squeeze two watches in. <laughs> yep, and eat dinner and call my mum. So I'm efficient. <laughs> And, and how many times have you reviewed, uh, re- rewinded to the uh, little? Oh, hang on, hang on. Let's get let's, let's hold your thirst traps in a minute, you two. Let's just let's just hold on. Let's we'll get to that when we get to it. I mean, very fitting that you this episode, Catherine. You did call your mum. It was a little bit of a call your mum episode, <laughs> wasn't it? Really, everybody should call their mums after this one. Vindication. Look, it was awesome. I'm just saying, the scruffies are getting a voicemail this week. Oh. Um. I was, oh God, I just completely lost my train of thought then. Oh, yes. I was just going to say, like, after we did the episode last week, Catherine, and we sort of gushed about how much we liked it, um, it was pretty crazy, the outpouring in general for the episode and the show. It really sort of, if there had been any sort of people who were kind of like, oh, I don't know about this, and that's not everybody, but I think the general feeling was like, we're in a golden age of Star Wars television right now. Yeah. it It's just brilliant television, full stop. And it's set in the Star Wars universe. There's just so much Star Wars. I mean, anyone complaining that there wasn't enough Star Wars in the Star Wars TV show, come on, like this week you had Stormtroopers, you had the little mouse droid. Do, 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 do. Like I Leo pointed at, at the screen then. Like I went, ooh, um, it's all there. Emperor Palpatine got name dropped. Got so name anyone- dropped, yeah. Anyone can about- the one. Like got name dropped in the episode. <laughs> the guy was just like dropped the pelt bomb. Yeah. Um it was a funny one, wasn't it? Because we talked about last week after the last episode of kind of, you know, because they've been doing these three episode arcs and just like, well, what what happens now? Like where do we where do we go? We really it was really about the aftermath, wasn't it? I don't think the episode yeah. was called what was it called? The episode called and the announcement um, or something? The announcement or an announcement or the announcement. Or just announcement, maybe. I'll have yeah. to look it up. Yeah. Um, but it was really like it could have been that it could have been aftermath, or it was really sort of the what Ex- what had happened after this. Yeah, there's the immediate aftermath. Then there's there is a time jump in there when we catch up with Cassian on um, Nemos. That's is that the planet name, Nemos. Um, the the Ibiza the planet, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, thinking back to Tony Giroy's Empire podcast um, where he talked about this, he talked about Episode 7 being like an interstitial episode, almost like a bridging episode between these two arcs and then the next arc. So yeah. you can sort of definitely start to see the threads that will take us into what's going to happen next. But you're right, it's the immediate aftermath you know the empire suddenly ramping down and just going full bore gloves empire. are off yeah, yeah. what do you reckon dow you like seeing the empire sort of pull their big boy pants on a little bit absolutely look I, while there might not have been a lot happening each character moved a few pieces on the board um you know they the, their plot personal plots advanced mm-hmm. um and there was definitely some change happening in the episode which was awesome yeah, like the, the sort of the events kind of, like you said, pushed everybody 
sort of towards their destiny one way or speaking of it of another one um you know gosh it, it, it was kind of weird because we're so we've, we've been sitting with these characters like you know the first three episodes we sort of sat on that one planet with andor and his mates there and then obviously the highest one we were really with a really small group of people for the most part and we just kept cutting and we cut it between what six or seven i feel like it was like six or seven different sort of stories or things that we were following so we followed cassian and his mum. we followed the isb we followed Cinta on on the planet. We followed yeah. Val. We followed Mon Mothma. Um, we followed Luthen and his aide as well. We followed Cyril <laughs> as well. As well, is that everybody? I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Is there anybody else? Like, there's probably Deidre. six. Sorry, Deidre. Yeah. And so, so we had all these sort of concurrent, like all these sort of, like you said, Dale, all these sort of players all all moving around on the board um, with all this sort of cutting between them. Um, but it was kind of cool. It was nice to get a little catch up and a, a sort of a, a refresher on where everybody was at. Yeah, it, you know, it's very appropriate that the composer for Succession is the composer for Andor because I see a lot of similarities in you know, Succession and Andor. Like there's episodes of Succession where you go, well, what happened? Nothing really, but something happened for every character. Every character made some kind of progression or in the case of Succession, regression. Um, You know, yeah, you're right. Something moved forward. You know, places are moving so that then when we'll pick them up again, the all the characters are in place and it's yep. just tense. Now, I watched the second time with the captions on. Um, you know, take a drink every time the caption tense music plays comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. It's just yeah. great. I could well, just did- follow Mon Mothma around for a full episode. That, that that little back bit on the back of the dress there, like, you know, it's uh, quite fetching. I, I don't know. I might be the only one here who finds that interesting, but I've, I've started to sound like Eric Strother and Matthew Thorburn are both thirsty for Mon Moth of it. I was sort of like, well, was this the dinner party that they were talking about earlier or do you think this is a diff- was this just one of her events? I, I think, think this is was- just one of her events. I think yep. um, because, yeah, that dinner party, Mon Moth said, oh, is that tonight? Um, whereas I think this is a different event that she had set up to have that guy what's his name tay over mm-hmm. the guy that everyone thought was um valorum valorum yeah mm. but he it was valorum like from 20 years yeah he would have wouldn't have aged a day um and yeah that was said to not trust her wretched yeah. husband <laughs> not well it was trusted. it was funny how they were basically trying to you know saying things without saying it like nobody wanted to be the one to say hey I'm, I'm all about the all about the rebellion. It was more just kind of like dancing around, like it was just a little dance around the thing. It was quite fascinating. Um, yeah, it was cool. And I mean, she showed up at the start with Luthen, and it was kind of weird because that she didn't actually even know what he was up to as far as the robbery stuff as well. I kind of thought that maybe they were a little bit more in cahoots, but he was just kind of like, "No, nah, I'm doing this." I've I, I pulled, I've planned this, and look at how proud he was of himself as well. He was like, he was so chuffed. Yeah, compartmentalizing, so that if Mon Mothma's compromised, he she can't compromise. You know the mission or what he is doing. It's all that protection. You know, as she said to Tay, only three people know. You know the truth about her, and you've got. And of course, in my head, I'm going, okay, Luthen, Bail Organa, and maybe Brea Organa. Um, oh, I thought maybe Luthen's assistant, but. Oh, yeah, Luthen's assistant. Yeah. So. F- f- Which is yeah. kind of unfair to call the assistant because she's, <laughs> she's out there certainly getting her hands <laughs> dirty. Um, yeah. Well, how funny was that? That she, you know, because I, I was, you know, they follow her uh, and, you know, she, uh, she's kind of walking through the through Coruscant and stuff. And um, it was some. Of in, my can I just say. In a spectacular red coat. Well, there you oh go. my There's god! Cosplay for London 2023. Catherine. Oh my god! You could go down That's... to Barbic- Barbican, where I think a lot of this was shot with the old brutalist architecture, and you could just you could probably do some wandering around there, and you'd fit right in. 
jeans and some knee-high boots and that jacket, yes. And I, I go sick with the straight, hair straightener, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, then she runs into Val, who's just like, I'm in city party mode. I'm going out with my girlfriends tonight. I've, I've gone and had a wash and I've wiped the dirt out of my face and I've put my good dress on and got my hair done and looking pretty schmicko. Um, it took me. It took me a minute to figure Coming out who it was. I'm like, so you better get this party started. I did, yeah, I was kind of like, oh, who's that? I'm like, oh, it's Belle. <laughs> she's just like she's wiped the mud off her, out of her, out of her eyes that she's been doing. So, um, so we can assume that the rest of the plan kind of went off with a hit. She dropped the money off or wherever it needed to be. They ditched the ship. Yeah. Cassian got off the planet, um, and she was sort of the last one standing, really. And then um, she kind of gets the orders to cut off all the loose ends. Um, that Cassian's, uh, you know, mm. he's dispensable. Yeah, which we know he isn't, of course, <laughs> because we know him. But I think Val is also thinking that also because she's like, he could have taken all of the money or more of the money and he could have, you know, not, you know, given the crystal back, like, there's obviously something there. Yeah. And I think the way that she was kind of that Luther, I'm sorry, I've got Luther's assistant's name. I keep saying assistant. Sorry, that's what it is. Is it Creel or How Ka- she was Kale? quite just dismissive that everybody else died as well. Mm. She's just like, well, you know, I recruited them. Yeah, well, they did a good job and let's move on. We can always find more people. So I think she was a bit just like, well, am I just going to go and kill more people just because you told me? Um, yeah. Do we I don't think know. that Val might be part of the prison break arc that well i was just thinking that that maybe they're like well we know where he is now he's actually in prison um if you want to get him he's going to be there um that'd be interesting to see what happens because it might be like well he's in prison it's only gonna be a maritime victory he tries to bargain his way out whether that's squealing on everybody so yeah because mm-hmm. as far as they know he can't be trusted they don't think he can be trusted at least not to talk if he gets put in prison yeah. So the, might that, be, like, the mission is to get, get and or either killed in prison or get him out of there so before he talks. Yeah, they know he's a mercenary. You know, even if he has, you know, quote unquote honor, he's still a mercenary, you know. And what wouldn't he sell to knock a few years off hard time? Six years for loitering around at the beach. Bloody hell. Like, seriously, and for looking around while there's. You know, troops chasing after people. Of um, course, you're looking around. <laughs> so look, we have. A, I mean, look, look, we'll follow the, the Cassian arc as I mean, Cassian's show. Um, but I mean, we talked about last week. Going, would he be dumb enough to go back to that that home planet? And clearly, he was dumb enough to go back mm. um, and walk around the streets by himself where there's nobody <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> show up at show up at his mum's place. Um, Fiona Shaw, she is such a good actor as well. Oh, she, she's she's so good. good. Um, yeah, she's she, she's nailing, nailing it as this character, and um, it, it's really touching to see that interaction. And and she's fired up, and this is, you know, the little does she know. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious how much she was like admiring, like she was talking about. You know, she wants to join the rebellion. She wants to do something, and it, like look at these amazing people. It was just kind of like. Oh, I really want to tell her, but almost like I want to tell her to show off, not really to tell her because, you know, because then she'd be like, well, what are you doing? You're just taking your money and you're running away. Like, she'd be more disappointed if he'd done that just for money and then just bug it off. Yeah. And, but yeah, turning up to get his mum out. He's like, no, no, we're going, we'll get somewhere warm, you know, the three of us. So he includes, you know, B2 Emo with my new... B2 Emo mm. pop, um, he includes B2 Emo as the three. Yep. Like, sweet, sweet Cassian. You know, he, he gave a sweet little head rub to B2 Emo when he walked in the door. Like, good That's boy, Cassian. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it was funny that I think he came back. It was interesting because he comes back and he sort of, you know, he expects one that there'll be a, everybody be happy to see him. Um, but it seems like every you know everyone blames him for for bringing the heat down on the town basically, mm-hmm. um, 
and he's a bit just like, oh, I was kind of expecting people would be happy to see that I'm all right. And, yeah, you know, and I've got all this money now. I'm a success. You're like, I got a score. I'm a, you know, I can pay people up, pay people back and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> just like, you idiot. Like you went and did something dumb and then you brought it, the empire back onto our front door, basically. Mm. Yeah. But at least he was prepared to be like, okay, we're leaving tonight. Like, yeah. Pack your things. We're going now. Like he at least had the sense to go. I can only be here for so long. And yes, he was walking through the streets with only a hood. Look, the magic of a hood in Star Wars hmm. is. He did the good. He did a good like flick. They were, they really got the hood flick up going on, don't they? Like you know, yeah. Luthen had that going on, and, and Cassian's got that going on as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then of course he's like, "Well, I got to go check in on on the ex girlfriend as well, just to you know, see how, he, how she's going." And um, yeah, she's not particularly thrilled to see him either. <laughs> well, he does he does click on and like it's quite he's he does click on of just like tell him to leave me alone, you know. Like he does figure that there's a good chance that now everybody knows about this robbery that you know they'll be looking for him and 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 all that kind of thing. Um, oh, I didn't mention. At the start of the episode, like Cyril at home with his mum, there's just like he's watching like the nightly news. Like Star Wars has like the nightly news. Did you think that was funny? There was like a news reader, like it was like yeah. Peter Hitchener or something. Or uh... <laughs> yeah, I. But it's, it's it the brings us net. come on. Yeah, it's a hollow net. It brings us back into you know what we have now, but it sort of makes sense. Like oh. Well, why wouldn't they have like well, it feels like lumpy in presenter. the holiday special, you know, like flicking the TV <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, you know, they've got the twenty four hour news channels. Yeah. Um and the how's the brutal relentlessness of Khan's mum? Like she's just hammering. She even upped it. She really up, upped it this time, didn't she? Like she really yeah, like she, she knows what she's doing. You know, like your 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 collar makes you look like a loser, <laughs> all this stuff, and yeah, um, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? And he he kind of goes to the big um, was it the Department of Standards or something? He goes to the Bureau the... of Standards. Now, after this week of the Bureau of Meteorology attempting to rebrand themselves here in Australia, we've mm. got to just call it the so Bureau this is the boss. now. So it's yeah. the boss. <laughs> So it's not the bomb, yeah. So with the very yeah. famous Bureau of Meteorology being known as the bomb affectionately for decades, says, no, no, we want to be the Bureau. We want to be a little bit more official sounding. Yeah. So, yeah, they put out that official uh, announcement before they secured the Twitter handles. <laughs> and I was defending them. People were going like, oh, God, they spent $220,000 on a rebrand. I'm like, yeah, if you engage an agency and have people working on it and do research and do brand, you know, style guides and branding and... You know, all that kind of stuff like that that comes with it, um, that's probably a reasonable price. But, yeah, probably would have secured the Twitter handles before that. But anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, and, yeah. and maybe hang off, you know, while the country's flooding. <laughs> well, it's a good time. Everybody's everybody's opening that app all the time, you know, so it's, <sighs> it's a good time to do it. Um, anyway. But yes, the Bureau of Standards looks like it's probably even less fun to work at than the Bureau of Meteorology. Um Pretty depressing so cubicles. cubicles. Ever worked ever worked in a cubicle that depressing, Dale, in your work life? I, I'm happy to say I haven't, but um, I think Khan's going to get some access to some very sweet files, and it's going to come gonna in. Buy his way back in. Oh well, also he could be on the he could be flagging something with uh, Spotty Andor. In, He's on in the fuel. Prison system. He's on fuel purity. That could be interesting if he like spots fuel going missing from from somewhere, you know, and that could lead to like the rebels stealing it or it being siphoned off for rebel use maybe. He's on his well, way back, maybe. He's on yeah, his way well, back. I mean, one of the yeah. things that, that the ISB was just like, all right, now we've got, you know, we've spoken to big poppy Palpatine. We've got basically access to everything, all the data. We've got, you know, we can do anything we want now. We, there was no real restrictions on what we can and can't take, you know, from information from different departments. So it does seem like it's like, Lining up that maybe um, Deborah Deirdre is it Deirdre Deirdre Debra. <laughs> Debra. I can think of that song that Beck song you know I think her name's Deborah uh, you know ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, you know and obviously she's you know she's not much short on ambition so she sort of positioned herself um, to uh, to get you know see some patterns and things and that was quite interesting that it was like 
What was her point? That basically they, because they section everything off, everyone's just looking in their own little thing. There's no way to correlate patterns because they're going, well, nothing's happening in this bit. And she's like, yeah. well, rebels don't care. They've got the, they'll just do it anywhere. Like there's yeah. no. Yeah. So they'll see one event in their sector and then nothing else happens. So it's an isolated incident, but then something else happens in someone else's sector and they think the same thing. There's no, yeah, yeah looking at the overall picture, which is what And the what pattern she's could be done. you're going across yeah. three sectors and are actually close to each other, but because you're just looking at one. Yeah. It was nice to see that Swami dude get put in his place too. That was quite nice. Yeah. Um, the Elven. Um, you got. I think you're, you 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 are probably the number. I mean, I know you're with the number one Andor fan, Catherine, but you might be the number one character remembering. You know, every time I listen to anybody else's reviews on Andor, whether it's the uh, you know Blue Harvest or uh, Sith List or Bad Motivators or Canto Bite or any of our other friends, it's always the first thing anybody says is, oh, "I just can't remember what's his name. I'm terrible with the names and I can't figure it out." And like I'm just as guilty as anyone else. But you you drop it like. I'm- I'm no trying one's... really hard. Um, but Belvin's actually played by, um, what's his name, Ben Bailey Smith, who fills, who, who used to filling occasionally on um, Kermode Mayo movie show. So that's where I know his voice from. So he was on the on the screen initially, didn't know who he was, and then, you know, I saw someone go, oh, yeah, with the, which attainment, and then I closed my eyes and went and heard his voice. I went, oh, yeah. Backs him, but he's like a DJ or something, a well known DJ. Oh, yeah. he's well, like he done, be, he should be doing that room. It's stuff. all circular. He could get up in front of the thing and, like, <laughs> you know, Belvin, son of Melvin. He could just be, you know, that could be his DJ name. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, things are ramping up with the Empire. They started, you know, putting stormtroopers everywhere. They're sort of starting kicking heads, increasing sentences, calling in fines, doing all this stuff, and um. And it was quite interesting because Luthen's, you know, because Mon Moth was kind of like, oh my God, you know, look what they're doing. He's like, great. Like, we wanted to do this because we need to see the like extreme, we need to see them get extreme. Yeah. So people start pushing against it. Like, if you just sort of incrementally let them take over, which is what they've been doing, you know, you don't really notice it's happening. Yeah. Um, they've been choking us slowly. Yeah. Which is something I think came into the first, one of the first episodes, wasn't it? That came up. So this, they've just gone all out. And, yeah. you know, and I think, um, Shit, not Deirdre. Did no, anyway. You know, she's just like, oh, they're making a mistake. We're like, we've gone too yeah. hard now. It's going to be harder to to um, harder to get stuff done now because everybody's just going to be um, rallying against yeah. us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So what do you think Sint is at? She got she 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 got a little motorbike. Or she got a cool motorbike. Rode yeah. it down a mountain. Spotted a ship. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the shot from the trailer, wasn't it? The Star yeah. Destroyer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she's obviously she went back to the camp to break it down even more, and then she's riding away. So we don't know, yeah, where she's to next. I, they do mention that she's done exactly what she was told as well, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Obviously, that's, that's no contact. Yeah. yeah. Um. If you want to catch these guys, you've got to leave someone behind to interrogate. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do. I mean, did you, we didn't really get any insight to whether she did, she killed that family or not. I, I never really thought about it that hard. And I think even, you know, we dismissed it when we recorded last week, Catherine. And then yeah. I listened to a few podcasts this week where they're all just like, oh, yeah, she killed those people. I'm like, I, oh, did she? Like, Hawes was so short. I'm like, Hawes, you man, like, sweethearted Hawes is just thinking that she's just icing all these people. I'm like, say it ain't so, buddy. See, I don't think so. I don't think she did because. I feel like it would be remarked upon now as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when watching it again in the last scenes that we saw of her, like in the control room, like putting on her gloves, you could see the hostages still alive. So, you know, she got changed into her imperial garb, um, you know, and they saw her and they were still alive. I don't see any point at that stage of killing the hostages. Mm. Um, they did go to a pains to say that the Empire did kill her family though. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll find out. I feel like, well, I, well, you know, things are going to happen now. Mm. Um, all right, one, you guys. One of the things that um, popped up that I'd forgotten about was when Marva talked about Cassian's sister. Like, yeah, sort of, that kind of letting on that she even knew more than. Yes, so I yeah. wonder if that's another loose thread, or that 
is going to pop up somewhere. Yeah, so this episode was the f- first time since the first three that we've had that link back to the home world. Um, so with mention of the sister and Marva saying, you know, no one else survived, it's just you, you know, it's not your fault. And then we also saw the flashback of when Cassian wasn't quite as young but still young um, when his father, you know, adoptive father Clem was hanged. Yeah, now we talk about like yeah. he was just basically telling everyone to, to be chill and he, yeah. he, he stepped out of the road to tell him to be chill and someone threw a rock at his trooper and he just, they all turned around and he's just standing there. Yeah. I was like, oh, dude, that's very unfortunate for you. But, I mean, that was the shot of the – because we kind of wonder where the – because we'd seen the shots in the trailer of the stormtroopers and then that shot there where there were clone troopers still. Yeah. And it was like, mm. oh, are they clone troopers? Like, what's that all about? And so there's there's the little connect. Mm. Um, it was horrible, wasn't it, just seeing that, you know, just the brutality. We know what they're like, but just a, a reminder of they don't care if you're innocent or just sweeping, yeah. sweeping and, the debris away. How his mum was like, well, like I never walked down. I'd never walk down that square. I'd always yeah. avoid it until today when I heard that the rebellion was basically, you know, here and and getting serious. It's and so walked, dark, isn't it? it is, it's bloody yeah. dark. It really is. And I hadn't. I. I. Someone had to remind me. I. I forgot to click that he said that his name was Clem, which was his dad's name. That he he was yeah. he was using his dad's name as an alias as well. Um. All right, you guys. Let's talk about the big shirtless. Yes! Vindication! Do you know the first was that on your prediction was... show, was it, that Cassian would take your shirt off? I don't remember yep. that. Was it? Yep. That was one of my predictions to the scruffy-looking podcasters. Oh, right. <laughs> they, they, do they take you seriously or are they just like Catherine's doing wishful thinking here? I, I think they laughed, but they, they answered it. So it's on their prediction list. So they will be getting a voicemail <laughs> that, yes, Cassian was shirtless. So Cassian basically takes the money and goes to space. Ibiza. Like Black Bull. Well, it's not. It's definitely not Ibiza. <laughs> I haven't been to Ibiza, but we. I mean, we live in a country with lovely beaches. This is like the sea, the shitty seaside British town where you, you're, you're talking about your Brightons, your, your Black Pools, your Portsmouths. Your, your, your place where British people go to the seaside to sit next to some water and some rocks because there's no actual beach um, with all the crappy amusements on the on the side of the thing. Like I think it was actually shot in one of those seaside towns as yeah. well. I think um, it was like, um, yeah, Blackpool, yeah, I think. Which is, yeah. you know, it, there's an amazing British book called Shit Towns and I think <laughs> like those a lot of those seaside, you know, because I think the uh, the cheap jet, the cheap Ryanair flights and, in, you know, cheap European travel killed a lot of those seaside towns because people could just go to Spain or France or somewhere that's quite nice. But, um, yeah, Cassie had basically, you know, bunkers down in a, in a, in a hotel with a, with a lady friend and uh, – he looks like he's drunk when he's, he looks like he's just woke up drunk basically. And he's gone through his little box of his guns and his credits and, and um, he's kind of in holiday mode. He was one, he was sort of one step away from a Hawaiian shirt really, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I just remember thinking, watching that, thinking, be still my beating heart is what Catherine <laughs> means thinking at this moment. He's still clutching her pearls. She just wanted to slit the throat of that lady who was you know, hanging <laughs> yeah. in the. Like, you don't. You don't know what you've got, lady. You don't. You're not appreciating it. Don't ask too many questions. I'm awaiting for all the DMs of people going, Catherine, Catherine. There's the and sending me screenshots. So come on, yep. send them. Send them. <laughs> I don't have a screenshot. I could have used it as the cover art. I do the cover <laughs> art usually before we do this, just so I could, I, you know, I can put it up straight away. But maybe next week we'll put shirtless Cassian on the cover art yeah. for you, Catherine. I, want, I wonder how long till someone makes a gif of it. And so I wonder I how long before it's your, <laughs> your phone screensaver. It'll be like you and the Drake meme of kind of like you know Cassian in a in a big woolly jacket. You're a bit like, mm, and then you've got like Cassian shirtless. You're like, uh, like do it, do it that one there. That'll that'll probably be someone will probably knock that up. Um, but I mean, it's, it was weird. Like he, he went to the seaside town and, and like we got shore troopers, which was quite cool. It was nice to see shore troopers again. Um, now when that Imperial security droid started walking up the thing, did you get a little bit excited? Did you think maybe it was Alan Tudyk? Oh, it was a little bit, but then I noticed that it was red and K2SO has the yellow stripe. So 
that had like the red stripe around the arm. Um, oh, there's a level of observation. K2SO there. has yellow. Um, and then he spoke, and I'm just like, ah, oh. he's just like, what yeah. are you doing here? Like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of, oh, look, he's trying to strangle Cassian. <laughs> um, it was weird. I don't know. What do you reckon, Dal? It just seemed a bit weird. He just kind of stood there and, and he was just trying to answer their questions. And then they just, it just seemed a little bit weird that a predicament he got himself in. It all happened, happened a bit fast. It did happen very quickly, but um, we're on to prison break. That's what it's what it's sending us on to. I, I think that scene says a lot in terms of. Um, so like a racial profiling kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, the profiling. Well, that's the thing. Like I'm sitting here place. as a privileged white guy who's never been in trouble for anything and going, oh, that seems weird that it happened like that. And I'm sure there's probably people who go like, yep, that's exactly what happens if you look a bit yep. different to somebody else. So yep. And, you say? know, all he was doing was sweating and looking around and he was arrested and then put in prison for six years. He's like, hey, man, didn't you see with my shirt off before? Like, surely that gets me some currency <laughs> in this town. There were uh, some aliens there. Um, as there was well some nice that. design That's stuff too, wasn't there? No, that, it, it, that, that really went kind of more Star Wars. That almost felt like a little Last Jedi issues as well, you know. Yeah, that sort very of, canter by. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was kind of funny. Like it was there was, it was almost comedic because there was like the shot where he's in front of the wall and you see the security droid like grab that other person and they're all like, like rah, they're fighting. And I'm like, this feels a bit, this feels more like wackadoo Star Wars. Like everyone keeps saying this show was so serious, but it was like, oh, this is a bit kind of wackadoo. And then obviously it gets a bit more serious again. Um, and, and the and the uh, woman ser- serving out the sentences to them, that was, she was fantastic. Yeah, she's just sort of like, well, you would have got six months a little while ago. Now you've got six years. Um. Yep. And the so, old old style like credit card oh, the thunk, machine. Thunk, thunk, yeah, that's how I got my credit card like um, cloned when I was in when I first moved to England. I was a stupid young and naive person. I bought a laptop at this laptop store on Tottenham Court Road, and they was like, "Oh, your card won't process." And they went at the back and they got one of those dunk dunks and you know came back, paid for my laptop, and then like two days later, it was like these crazy you know, transactions and stuff on there. I'm like, oh, that was dumb. Like, why did I do why did I do that? It was like uh anyway, I got my money back. It was all right. Um now I think in the trailer or one of the trailers there is some sort of shot of Cassian in sort of this weird white uniform, isn't there? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. See, I had thought my cockadoodle um or cockadoodie speculating that I had in my brain from last week was that Terraman didn't die. Um but he had been captured and he was the one in prison and that Cassian would be recruited to help break him out mm-hmm. and that's where the prison break would come in. But obviously that was wrong. Big surprise. My speculation was wrong. I don't um, know. You were just reveling in one of your speculations coming right just before. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> your track record's not too bad. Oh, uh, you know, like remember Bobby I, he knows he's – um. His audience. He's like, you know, memo to Tony Gilroy. There must be at least one scene with Diego Luna Topless. Yep. This is the only thing I demand. We right. still we haven't we still haven't had any dance, but it still could come in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who knew that Catherine Neenor owed you know, bought you know ninety eight percent of Disney stock, <laughs> and she's secretly the one that's pulling the strings in the background. Um, yeah, so it'll just be a question of is Cassian just trying to get out because he doesn't want to be in prison or is somebody trying to get in there to shut him up or to break, just to break him out or maybe he recruits some people in there or who knows. Like it'll be an interesting sort of, you know, we might just get another thing of another two episodes after this of Cassian building relationships with people in prison and then we've got a prison break episode. And Yeah, he's just got to be chained to someone else like a leg in each you know, <laughs> like wear brother, wear from... brother out, the old kind of <laughs> style sort of thing. Yeah. Like he's on a chain gang kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the um, the look of from what I remember from the trailer of the prison is very um, thx. Yeah, one one three eight. So that would be an obvious you know thing to use as a reference point because obviously that is George Lucas. Mm. So using that as a reference point makes absolute sense. But I would say 
yeah, that Rebellion know he's there. They want to do something with him and break him out, kill him, but maybe they've got links to more rebels within there, so breaking him out along with the rest of them. Yep. Well, he has gone in under a false name as well, though, so I'm assuming he's yeah. used some of his credits to buy a false identity, so that might buy him some time. So who knows? They might... they. It might be a point where he's just there and then so finally somebody clicks that it's Cassie and Andor who's in there. Maybe yeah. it's even bloody old mate, you know, Cyril. Cyril. Who, who catches on or, you know, sees p- pictures or, does you know, because he's obsessed with his face. Like everyone else might not really care what he looks like. I'm obsessed with his face. Well, there you go. Well, it was you who would probably be in a similar thing as well. Um you know, that's the thing. look at the next episode <laughs> where Cyril goes into his room to like look at his little hollow thing of Cassie and Andor, but it's just that shirtless one of Cassie and Andor in the thing. <laughs> the, the mugshot's gone. He's just going, How did you get that? He's like, Well, it was on a security camera that was in a hotel somewhere. And, you know, he's I've got all the information now. And it's the hollow net. We've already established that. And then his mum comes in and catches yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> She's like, Oh, Cyril. You know what? That's actually at least you're showing some, you know, some sort of interest in other stuff outside from from work and things. So at least it's something, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, another great episode. Very, very different to the last few. Mm. Uh, like you said, Dale, all the sort of pieces are moving. All the major players are kind of like I feel like it's going to be kind of like a, a Guy Ritchie film or something where you've got all these characters and then they all converge at the end in this sort of interesting way where they all affect each other in a you know, whether it's a, an event or whatever it is. Um, we still don't really, like the prison seems like a thing, but what are the other characters doing? What's Luthen going to do with that money? Um, are they going to start another thing? Is Mon Mothma, what's she going to do next? Um, Where's Nimic's manifesto? Yeah. Is it you just, know, you know, in his back pocket somewhere? Is it? Does he take it with him to prison? You know, Has can he got he, it? Can he keep it with him? Yeah, I, I would doubt it. Or is it with his stash? You know what's happening with his stash? Um, I get bogged down on those details. Is like, his mum going to join the rebellion? Yeah. Oh. How interesting is it going to be when they finally do like the visual dictionary or whatever it is? How how dense is this going to be for for Cassian? The amount of planets, characters, all the all the small details. It's impossible to keep track of them all. Mm. And we've really only gone to you know Coruscant is the only established star wars planet that we've gone to they've all been new planets you know as a traditionally star wars has always sort of dined out on your traditional planets and things especially you know tatooine's the obvious one but um this has really just been like old new stuff i think did odd mandel get a a name drop this episode yeah shout out yeah yeah um they're monitoring the hyperspace lanes to odd mantel now what what's that from it's like from an um comic or something or Ormondale's where he goes, well, the bounty hunter that we ran to in Ormondale changed my mind. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you, but you're right, it is in Marvel did sort of delve into it. in Of what, what the planet actually yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I think it's kind of like a shonky planet, I think. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit of a shonk. Um, okay, guys, any any closing thoughts on this before we wrap this one up again? Just oh, happy I to really, go along really, with the ride. I really loved the episode. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I'm I'm just loving, again, you know, I'm not fond of rules, so um, <laughs> especially for myself. <laughs> I, I, guess, I don't know. Your your bookshelf looks very ordered behind you, Dale, so you can't be it that does, much but, of a renegade, mate. Yeah, I, I, I like that there's no rules to this. You know, there's, there's this, even the story seems to not follow traditional storytelling, and it's, it's really exciting and refreshing. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, that we're getting drip-fed those little bits of Cassian's backstory you know the childhood um the events with his um with Clem's hanging and we're getting those little glimpses you know Marva talking about you know no one survived um Canari that's the name of that planet isn't it see you after you, sa- you, you saying <laughs> I I was getting things right now I'm scared of oh uh, no um, what would the public say you know so you know I'm hoping that we find out bits more but that's looking like it's going to be a bit drip fed to us which is fine you know i'm loving it um stellan skarsgård good lord that man he's amazing Mm. like what he 
can do with the expression on his face, how he was, you know, doing. With his back turned at certain certain moments and things as well, which was quite cool, yeah. Yeah, with his back turned so the um, driver couldn't see him and, you know, at that point the expression was the Luthan who sent Cassian on the mission. And he turned around and he was the... the, a flighty you know, sort of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the antique seller again and being able to say all these grim things with the flamboyance of an expression of a salesperson. And he's amazing. I know I keep ranting on about it, but good Lord, Andor is prestige TV. It is great TV. Why aren't more people talking about it this is what should be getting the nominations getting all the attention (laughs) no but seriously it is you compare like scenes in succession like they take place in boardrooms guess what we had a boardroom today in um in the isb just as good just as chilling like amazing and we have breakings and and heists, and you think back to all of the like prestige dramas, like yeah, Breaking Bad. They have those type of things happening all the time. Why isn't Andor getting that kind of it's recognition? Still, well, it's it still needs going. to. It's, it's still going. I, I um, definitely think um, we're, it's changing the way we look at the rebellion already. So by the time this is this is done, it, we're really going to have a very different view. It's of just that. not a bunch of ragtag kids, exactly. kids in spaceships anymore, is it? It's it's there's a lot more. Um, I, We're seeing if, how we get those spaceships. Yeah. I, I mean, it was quite an interesting place just before we log off, just where it kind of left the episode. That they, they kind of circle back around onto Cyril and his little cubicle clicking away and things. I, I feel like that he's kind of going to be the linchpin in this for good or bad. I, they seem mm. to be sort of coming back onto him, what, how he how he plays a role in all of this. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but it will reveal itself that, yeah, that, that this sort of, somewhat insignificant person that is pretty much dismissed by everybody um, is going to be quite pivotal in this one way or the other. Yeah. So watch this space. Um, well, thanks, guys. Nice to have you back on, Thank Dale. You. Catherine, you. you know, the tour rolls on. Um, yeah, I'm just listening to other podcasts and people are talking yeah. about you. <laughs> in another <laughs> podcast Steel was talking about it the other day. We got a nice little uh, retweet from on this pod from Steel the other day and other people as well. You're on, you know out there doing doing your thing, anything you want to plug uh, this week? I haven't lined up an, a guest yet for this weekend, but this is the shout-out. Who wants a guest on that geek pod? <laughs> there you go. Send your uh, – I got a request to a, a podcast today actually, but one that I hadn't um, I haven't even heard of, but it was uh, the time zone. It was an American one, the time zones wouldn't work, unfortunately. But still send stuff. I might be able to do things if you want to chit-chat on a podcast. I can do what I can. Dale, always a pleasure to see you, mate. Anything you want to you want to plug? No, keep keep Andor coming. It's fantastic. I mean, how can you argue with that? Well, hopefully, we'll get you back on again next week, and we'll be back. Tony, at- Tony, find more reasons to have Diego take his shirt off. Well, maybe he'll get like sprayed I, I, I sprayed down in the shower. shower. Yeah, the, the shower, the, the, the prison shower or something. <laughs> oh my god, you two, you you guys go, you guys go, go off have your own shit cold oh. showers. <laughs> Cool off over here. Yeah, get yourself a, a fan like you're a southern lady sitting on a thing like, mercy <laughs> me. Like, <laughs> you go fan yourselves off, you two. Um, yeah. We'll see you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.